What is up guys? Uh, welcome to another screencast. I'm going to keep the Affinity Designer train rolling here. Um, this screencast is dedicated to the assets panel in the program. Uh, what it's useful for is like high quick prototyping, I would say. Um, I, you can also use it for icons, UI elements as you see on the screen. Uh, so to give you a um, perspective of this, I've created just a couple mockups and then I'm also going to create our own little asset library which we can use for what like wireframing or something going forward. Uh, I like to use uh, in the past, I've always used different programs for wireframing, be they web-based applications like Balsamic um, or Sketch or something like that. And I haven't found one that I'm just in love with yet. And it usually there's always that boundary between uh, software into like creativity. So if something restricts me from putting ideas down on on the canvas that's like instant out the window for me so if i can do it quickly uh, that is the ultimate goal so to give you a perspective what assets are in the program um, you'll actually go to they won't be viewed by default you'll have to fire up the window that actually displays the assets but you go to view studio assets and in the latest version 1.5 I think I think it's 1.54 right now I could be wrong uh, this comes bundled with iOS 10 UI elements which is pretty dang cool uh, that's what you see on this mock-up on the left here this is a retina iPhone uh, mock-up and on the right is just a basic web page uh, I think it's 1600 pixels wide and this one's about or it's it's basically the pixel density of a iPhone retina um, so these are pre-made assets um, these are not on the right so we'll get into how to make those in a second I just want to give you a perspective of how to use assets so on the on the panel itself there's uh, these categories you can add um, they come with a parent category which you name um, you can name right here you create a new category which this one's already made so you don't have to do that if you're using iPhone elements um, and then these are subcategories of which you can add as many as you like you can do that by cr creating subcategory here um, you can also import ready-made assets or export these uh, for other affinity files uh, so as you can see there's quite a bit in this collection um, which is really handy uh, so for that to come for free it's pretty cool on the team of Affinity Serif uh, but to use these they're li it's literally you know drag and drop so you can add them like anything else of an element and they should act like symbols so if you do create different color I believe they update in real time yeah see the only difference there between these and symbols is that if you were to drag out another instance of it, it's reset to that color so they don't sync up. But any continued copy of something like this will sync up to your original asset, which I think is pretty handy, which that isn't any look I want to go for, but you can see demonstrated there how things update. Uh, so you can trash those. Um, and building layouts in general is way easier if you have assets ready, which is what I was hinting at in the beginning when I want to wireframe something or prototype something out. Uh, how easy is it like this just to drag and drop, you know? So, uh, and all these things are editable, which is even cooler. Uh, some UI libraries give you basically just images to work with and you can't customize absolutely everything. And Affinity goes above and beyond and gives you everything, so. So those are like the ready-made assets. Unfortunately, there's only one library available at this time. Maybe there'll be um, resources available or someone will make kind of a resource library like um, a lot of these sketch resources you find online. Hey, maybe that's a free app idea for you. Um, but when you get into wanting to create your own assets, um, you can do that 
I'm going to move this. You can do that pretty easily. So since we have iOS 10 here, I'm going to create one. I'm going to just create one called wireframing. Um, so by default, it names it assets. Um, you'll want to rename that. So if you rename, you just hit rename category. I'm going to call this wireframing. And then it creates by default a subcategory called assets. Uh, we'll rename that to this one. I'll just do like global elements. You can you can name these whatever you want. And I don't know if you can tell from the video, but there is a darker shade of gray at the top here. Uh, that is, and I mean it could be improved, but that is basically a hot spot where you drag elements to become an asset. So I, on the right here, I've pre-made um, some form elements. How, like no one wants to recreate these every time, especially for wireframing. So uh, here I've grouped each each element or each group of elements. So a text area has that placeholder text and the border boundaries as well. Uh, so to create this as an asset, the easiest thing to do is just drag it into this gray spot. On the very left side of the assets panel, it'll light up like a little blue highlight. Drag that in. This will shift back to where you originally drug it from. And then now you'll have your text area as a global element. So you can drag and drop and edit those you know, to your liking. So it's super rapid, super useful. Um, you can do the same with our inputs, placeholder, select fields. Radio label. Okay, so I just got a little error. Um, this this select field actually has an embeddable document, which is an SVG I copied from another program. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to rasterize those arrows, and it will become an image, super blurry. I'd go back in and fix that um, eventually with um, creating the. The actual arrows myself but I'm just giving you a quick overview of this so yeah so now we have this element handy to us we can just drag and drop things as we like you can edit this to your you know whatever you want so um, is web crunch totally cool of course that's true, right? Come on, come on. And then, um, same thing here, checkbox, pretty handy. I don't know, I'm just going quick here. Um, so that's basically the gist of it. You can do it with buttons. Um, so you can always have a button available to you. You know, look how quick this goes. Like, I want to create a form. Uh, we'll do a text area, a basic submit button, and you know, voila! It's it's crazy, but it's so cool. So, a lot of other programs probably have something similar. Um, I know Sketch out of the box. If you create a new template with um, the basic web design template, they come with these symbols baked in, um, which is cool, but like there's no real quick, easy way to, to do assets like this in Affinity. Um, they have, Affinity has symbols too. I'm gonna do that in a new video, uh, but it's essentially what you see or what you believe in, in Sketch. So here we actually, since we um, changed a few things, those became symbols. So that's pretty handy. It's just automatic. So use this um, on your own projects. I mean, I don't know how else to capture how awesome it is. So it's super quick, super fast. Um, if you want to create even more subcategories, you just create subcategory. You can rename it. It'd be maybe a cool feature if this popped up when you clicked create subcategory so you don't have to hit click rename every time. But um, So if you want to move something, um, I think you can just 
wonder if you can just move it. No, you can't. Okay. So I guess you can't move between categories yet. I bet that might be a feature built before long. So the easiest way to do that then is just to remove it from one, add it to the other, and you're good to go. So the cool thing I'd say with assets, especially if you're working in a team, is the ability to export. Uh, this gets saved t t as like an AF file, I think, and then your team member can um, import it just the same way as you would export almost. You just do import. So simple, quick, easy. I love it. I hope you guys do too.